Welcome back! To quickly summarize what went on in the previous video, we had a project and a number of cash flows associated with that project. Specifically, we said that that project is a teddy bear producing factory. And what we had to do was evaluate this project and eventually decide on whether it is a sensible one to undertake. To enhance your understanding, a step-by-step -step approach is being followed in solving this problem. And over here in the first step, we transfer the project cash flows on the timeline and also label them as CF sub T, where T depends on when a cash flow occurs. Without further ado, let's continue with step 2 and the calculation of present values. We will once again use the present value formula, and as you can see, the calculations can be found on both the timeline and down here. Minus 10 is already in present value terms, so no adjustment is needed. In the past, we saw that the present value formula still holds even for an amount at time 0, as we'll be dividing by 1, which leaves our value unchanged. And this is what I'm doing over here. I'm dividing minus 10 by 1.1 to the 0th power, which equals 1. Let's now discount the other amounts to get them in present value terms. As regards cash flow 1, 3 over 1.1 to the first power equals 2.73. And remember that our amounts are in millions of euros. Now in the cash flow 2 case, I wrote 5 over 1.1 squared, which equals 4.13 million euros. As we mentioned in the previous video, and you can see this on the timeline as well, this 5 is the outcome of netting two cash flows with opposing signs one of positive 6 and another of negative 1. And we're allowed to do that since the two cash flows are at the same point in time. But even if I had calculated the present values of these two cash flows individually and proceeded with the netting of the two at equal 0, since one is an inflow and the other an outflow, the outcome would have been the same. And we can see this mathematically as well. 6 over 1.1 squared minus 1 over 1.1 squared, I use this minus sign because 1 is a cash outflow. So this equals 6 minus 1 over 1.1 squared, which in turn equals 5 over 1.1 squared, which is what we just calculated over here, and gives us 4.30 million euros. And I can calculate the difference of these two on the numerator because they have the same denominator. And why do they have the same denominator? Because they are at the same point in time. And if me explaining this seems redundant, then that's good, because it means you already get what's going on. Let's now go through the calculation of the present value of the final payment. That's 7 over 1.1 to the third, which equals 5.26 million euros. Now that we have everything in present value terms, what's left for us is to calculate the value of the project. Let's do that in our final step. Here I've rewritten our calculations and I will apply the concept of value additivity in order to arrive to the project's value. Applying the concept of value additivity is nothing complicated. It's just a way of saying that we will add these values up or in other words, net the sum of positive cash flows with the sum of negative cash flows. And we can do so because they are at the same point in time. We transferred everything in present value terms in this case. So minus 10 plus 2.73 plus 4.30 plus 5.26 gives us 2.12. And this 2.12 million euros is the value of the project. What we are saying over here is that if a firm undertakes this project, then it will increase its value by 2.12 million euros. And this value in finance is called the net present value or NPV of the project. If we were to decompose the name net present value, then we'd say that the word net is used simply because we netted cash inflows and cash outflows and the words present value because we netted our cash flows after taking them at time zero, that is in present value terms. The concept of the net present value is extremely important as this is how we evaluate not just projects, but almost everything in finance. Over here, the net present value turned out to be positive, 
so this project is a sensible one to undertake. If the present value turned out to be negative, then it wouldn't make sense for a given firm to undertake this project, as it would destroy value instead of creating. And this is another way of saying that the firm would lose money as it would receive less than the amount it invested on the project. I'll close this video by saying that over here we've seen value additivity in perhaps its simplest application. We'll see this concept in other applications as well. In the following video, I will take things closer to the real world.